everyone. Thanks so much for joining our webinar, Anti-Inflammatory Eating. I'm Marta Human. I'm a registered dietitian and the Pennsylvania, Delaware Wegmans Nutritionist, and I'm going to be moderating today's webinar. Please note the information providing dur provided during today's webinar is for educational purposes only, and it's not intended as a substitute or a replacement for medical advice, medical nutrition therapy, or individualized nutrition counseling. I'm going to soon turn off my camera and then rejoin you at the end to, moder to moderate the Q&A. And I'm very pleased to introduce our presenter, Brittany Reynolds. She's my friend and colleague, a registered dietitian, and the Rochester Division Nutritionist. Take it away, Britt. Thank you, Marta, for the warm introduction and welcome everyone. We are so pleased you're joining us here today. Um, I'll start just by saying, you know, take a look through any popular wellness magazine or scroll through the internet and you're likely to read about the rise of chronic inflammation. And for good reason, um, as we're learning more how inflammation is likely at the root of many chronic health conditions. And our lifestyle, it, it does qu have quite a lot to do with chronic inflammation, particularly our food choices, um, which may play a role in an anti-inflammatory pattern of eating. Um, so yes, diet can have an impact on inflammation, but some claims often uh, fail, I think, to address overall the big picture, which is to focus on an overall pattern um, of your eating habits that likely have that anti-inflammatory potential. And that's why I'm joining you folks today to, to dive more into that. But before jumping into all things food and diet, I'd like to just set the stage by explaining what is inflammation. Well, essentially, um, it is the body's response to a problem. Our immune system exists to heal injury and to fight foreign invaders such as bacteria, um, viruses, and other toxins that threaten injury or illness to us. And inflammation is a Latin-derived word, meaning to set on fire. So we have acute inflammation, and this is the short-term reaction in our body that we react to when it interprets something as being harmful. So this is, in fact, a healthy immune response to help heal injury or infection. Um, we may see pain, redness, swelling, fever, um, all examples of symptoms from acute inflammation versus chronic inflammation. Now this is when the body fails to switch off the inflammatory process. Um, inflammation becomes harmful when it's prolonged and begins to damage healthy cells, creating a pro-inflammatory state that we also term sometimes as metaflammation. Now this chronic inflammation, this is what's believed to be a mediator in disease progression. And what we're hearing is linked to many chronic conditions, either as a potential cause or as a symptom um, such as arthritis, diabetes, heart disease, and Alzheimer's disease, uh, just for example. So three main focus areas I'd like to explore with regards to inflammation are food or components of food and their role in either having a pro or anti-inflammatory potential. We'll look at some examples of anti-inflammatory diets and I'll share resources how Wegmans can help. So with regards to inflammation, some foods are considered to have pro or anti-inflammatory potential. But what do I mean by this? So let's start with some components of certain foods that, when consumed regularly, uh, may tend to increase inflammation or be pro-inflammatory. So examples in food, foods that contain high amounts of saturated fat, which, just as a reminder, are typically solid at room temperature, and are often found in red and processed meats, whole milk dairy products, um, coconut oil, and sometimes commercially prepared baked goods, just for example. Added sugars, which again are the sugars that are added to food and beverages at some point before their consumption. And examples include those found in sugary and sweetened beverages. And just read an interesting article that according to the American Heart Association, many folks consume more added sugars in their diet than they realize. Highly refined carbohydrates, such as dessert or pastries, are known to have inflammatory potential. And ultra-processed ingredients, which are found in highly processed foods. These are foods that not only have been processed, but are believed to have other substances such as salt, um, sugar, or fat 
added to them primarily to add flavor or extend the shelf life. So processing can be as basic as freezing, canning, or heating, but ultra or highly processed foods take things further. So for example, frozen corn would be considered a processed food, whereas corn tortilla chips is a highly processed food. But maybe you're asking why or how are these components of food considered to have an inf inflammatory potential? Well, I don't want to get too sciencey, but um, low-grade inflammation is associated with an increase of inflammatory mediators that circulate in our body, our muscles, our cells. And um, certain times these can have an effect on the immune system and can facilitate that prolonged or chronic inflammatory state. But when it comes to inflammation, understandably, many folks want to know what to eat, what should they be including to help support their health. We commonly dub these foods as anti-inflammatory. So examples of foods to support an anti-inflammatory pattern of eating include fruits and veggies. Some examples would be tomatoes, leafy greens, um, strawberries, blueberries, oranges and cherries, all wonderful examples, whole grains, beans and nuts, for example, think chickpeas, pinto beans, almonds, walnuts, maybe hemp or chia seeds, fatty fish, for example, salmon, mackerel, tuna, and sardines, and then last on our list here, olive oil. But again, how? Like how, how are these linked to an anti-inflammatory um, pattern that undoubtedly research is showing helps support calming inflammation? Well, research on the exact mechanism is not conclusive, but one theory suggests that certain nutrients found in the foods that I mentioned above become part of the very structure of our cells in return protecting them from inflammation. An example of this theory is the fatty acid um, omega-3 found in fish helps to preserve our brain health by preserving cell membranes and facilitating, facilitating communication between cells. Um, lutein is a compound found in leafy greens that selectively deposits in our eyes, supporting eye health, for example, helping prevent cataracts. And uh, carotenes are a compound that give um, orange veggies that vibrant color. Well, that compound deposits under our skin to help protect against sun damage. I just find this all so interesting. Now, in addition to foods that support an anti-inflammatory pattern, these are a few other considerations for just fine tuning or rounding out that pattern. Not necessary to include, but are options for drinks, spices, um, some flavors, sweets that may provide anti-inflammatory properties. So here I have examples that include tea, coffee, uh, dark chocolate with at least 70% or higher cocoa. And I will always try my best to find a health association related to chocolate. And then herbs and spices such as turmeric, which has been known to be the most commonly used spice in the world, cinnamon, black pepper, or ginger. And this is not a conclusive list of herbs and spices, um, but they are considerations to add flavor to food. And again, have been shown to show uh, wonderful health potential. Now, can we make this an anti-inflammatory meal just by adding blueberries? I, I think most folks would know that the answer is no. We don't know what effect this meal would have on inflammation or health, not without considering what the rest of the diet looks like. So a diet made up of primarily of foods that have inflammatory potential will likely promote inflammation even if once in a while you enjoy an anti-inflammatory meal. Now these images show that conversely, a diet made up mostly of foods that support an anti-inflammatory potential could likely have anti-inflammatory effects, either by preventing or reducing inflammation. So the point being here is it's the overall pattern of eating, not individual foods or nutrients in isolation that is truly pro or anti-inflammatory. Now some overarching components of an anti-inflammatory diet include whole or minimally processed foods, a plant-forward focus, so think fruits and vegetables, beans, whole grains, nuts and seeds, all rich in phytonutrients. And there's really a growing body of evidence that's showing the importance of these bioactive compounds for optimal health. This includes flavonoids, a group of plant compounds which demonstrate 
important anti-inflammatory facts. Though, like many nutrition-related findings, we still have much to learn. Um, also may include fish, eggs, or dairy with limited red meat and processed meat. Are limited, limited in saturated fats, added sugars, and sodium. And research actually suggests large meals can increase inflammatory markers in the blood. So consuming balanced meals throughout the day may help reduce inflammation as well. So let's look at some examples of what would be considered anti-inflammatory diets. And for clarity, diet in this context is a pattern of eating or an eating approach. And anti-inflammatory diets continue to top U.S. News Best um, Diet Reports. In fact, the Mediterranean diet was number one now for the fifth year in a row. And the Mediterranean diet, many folks have heard of this eating approach. It is a style of eating that focuses on fruits and vegetables, fish, seafood, olive oil, whole grains, and nuts and seeds. It encourages avoid, uh, enjoying all these foods in moderation. And research continues to support this eating approach, improving heart health, brain function, and may help prevent against other chronic conditions such as uh, cancer and diabetes. Next is the DASH diet. This is a dietary pattern promoted to prevent or control hypertension. It is rich in fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy. It recommends limiting foods with added sugars and saturated fat. And I think at this point, some of this is going to start all sounding familiar. Next, um, plant-forward eating approaches, whether that is a focus of leading with plants on your plate, just trying to get more plant foods on your plate, or following a vegetarian or vegan diet. And then the MIND diet, which is an acronym for the Mediterranean DASH, Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay, and this combines portions of the DASH diet and Mediterranean diet with an emphasis on fruits and vegetables. Um, this diet approach is fairly new. The first article describing the diet was published in 2015, and the MIND diet contains foods rich in certain vitamins, um, carotenoids, flavonoids that are believed to help protect the brain by reducing oxidative stress and inflammation. Though some nutrition Researchers feel that we need longer controlled studies to gain confidence in the MIND diet, so stay tuned here, this one. And then our Wegmans Healthy Eating Guidelines that you can find on wegmans.com backslash feelyourbest. They already showcase many foods that would be considered um, a, a, a benefit of eating an anti-inflammatory um, pattern. So just to recap, these are opportunities to consider essentially subtract from or add to your diet. We want to cut back or reduce sodium, added sugars, saturated fat, and ultra-processed ingredients, and add in foods rich in nutrients, such as fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts and seeds, and fatty fish, as research continues to support their anti-inflammatory properties. And really important to remember, the goal is not to become hyper-focused on a specific amount but to incorporate as many of these foods as possible into your regular meals and overall eating pattern. Now we recognize there is an increase in customers and households using anti-inflammatory eating approaches. So how can we help? Um, certainly Wegmans.com backslash feel your best is our landing page for all things nutrition related. Um, the resources developed here are from our nutrition team and they are in fact anti-inflammatory at the core as they have a plant-forward um, eating approach and a foundation in anti-inflammatory pattern, whether that's a connection to whole body health, um, other beneficial lifestyle factors such as restorative sleep. And while we certainly have a lot to offer, our commitment at Wegmans is to always continue to look ways um, to help folks, whether that through uh, be through resources, um, education opportunities such as this, or our products um, to help you feel your best. So with that, I'd like to join Marta again, and I know we have some time um, to move into our Q&A, and I hope we've um, gathered some great questions. Hey, welcome back. That was great, Britt, thank you. We do have a bunch of questions here, and I'm gonna um, start with one that we got a lot of questions about, and that's rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Can you share any more information around food or diet and its role in arthritis and inflammation? 
Yeah, absolutely. So rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease, which means your immune system attacks healthy cells in your body, um, causing inflammation, typically with painful swelling in that affected part of the body. Whereas um, osteoarthritis, that occurs when the protective cartilage that cushions the end of bones wears it's down over time. Um, despite what you might find on the internet, there is no specific diet plan that people with rheumatoid or other forms of arthritis um, need to follow. But we do know, uh, again, research suggests components of the Mediterranean diet, which emphasizes fish, fruits and vegetables, nuts, beans, and olive oil, may help arthritis by curbing inflammation. Um, for example, certain sources of fish contain the fatty acid omega-3. And this is interesting. I, I just was reading one study with arthritis that found those who had the highest consumption of omega-3s in their diet um, had lower levels of two specific um, inflammatory proteins um, further supporting the benefit of omega-3s in our diet. Interesting. Okay, yeah, and, and again, I mean, it's just another of the many reasons to follow the principles of the Mediterranean diet, all those vegetables and the fish. Um, fantastic. So you mentioned fish and you mentioned omega-3s. Um, what about fish oil supplements? Can they really help benefit or help get rid of an, uh, inflammation? Yeah, well, again, research has shown that taking fish oil supplements may help to reduce uh, joint swelling and pain among people who have um, specifically rheumatoid arthritis. And this is likely, again, due uh, to the presence of those omega-3s. Of course, we suggest thinking of ways to incorporate food first, but sometimes there may be gaps in our diet, which brings up the conversation around supplements. Um, though, again, it's always best to check with your doctor or pharmacist before starting a new supplement. Um, you mentioned turmeric as an option as well, um, you know, to round out the anti-inflammatory eating pattern. We had a few specific questions asking about its role and ideas on how to incorporate this, this spice into our diets. Like, how do we get it into our food? Yeah, sure. Um, great question. Uh, so the active ingredient in turmeric is a compound called curcumin, which has been shown to have both antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, turmeric is used as a natural coloring agent for some kinds of mustards, as well as an ingredient um, in curry powder. You can certainly enjoy the flavor of turmeric on its own or as a tea. It adds a nice depth of flavor to Thai and Asian dishes. Um, I've added it to stews and chilies before. You can add it to a soup or consider adding it to a latte or smoothie. Um, and be sure to search recipes on Wegmans.com just for turmeric. You can enter that, that word. We currently have a wonderful butternut squash muffin recipe that includes turmeric as an ingredient that I would encourage folks to, to check out. That sounds yummy. I love butternut squash. Might just have to make those. <laughs> um, now some folks have brought up questions surrounding gluten and dairy. What, what is the inflammation connection and uh, should we be a limiting or avoiding either gluten or dairy? Again, Great, great questions, and I understand why those, those two specific um, topics come up. So let me start with gluten, which is a protein uh, that is found in wheat, rye, and barley. And I think we are undoubtedly in a time of heightened gluten awareness. And because gluten can trigger inflammation or unfavorable symptoms in people with celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, some folks might have the misunderstanding that avoiding it will reduce inflammation in them Though I will share, there is no strong evidence that supports this for people without celiac disease. So eliminating gluten would be a decision for you and your doctor to make. And then as for dairy, well, there's no easy answer. Um, research that I've, that I've seen exploring the link between dairy and inflammation um, in some cases has turned up conflicting. I mentioned before a diet that is regularly high in saturated fats, which are found in cheese and um, full fat dairy products, again, are showing to likely increase inflammation, those saturated fat components. But we know dairy products contain other health promoting nutrients such as calcium and vitamin D or probiotics found in yogurts. Um, so despite some conflicting information overall, Research points to dairy products generally having anti-inflammatory properties. Great. Okay. So speaking of dairy, this is a nice segue. Um, you've shared a lot of health information about food uh, and maybe even components of food here today. What are the, some of the questions about beverages and sources of hydration? Do you have any 
Do you have any that contribute to pro or anti-inflammatory potential? Yeah, sure, of course, because our diet also includes what we drink, right? Um, But like food, it's important to remember it is the larger pattern of our hydration and beverage sources that will have the greatest impact. Um, That said, to support in uh, an anti-inflammatory pattern, we should limit or reduce beverages with added sugar, mentioned before the sodas or sweetened teas, um, those highly flavored coffee drinks. And I, I think some research also suggests that alcohol consumption leads to increased inflammation and can impair the body's ability to regulate that inflammation. Now, I mentioned unsweetened coffee and tea earlier as beverage options to fine tune an anti-inflammatory pattern. And in fact, um, tea, specifically green, black, and white tea, is one of the most um, studied beverages when it comes to its benefits for having anti-inflammatory properties, likely because tea contains uh, polyphenols, a plant compound, that has been shown to have a strong anti-inflammatory effect. Um, And of course, I'd be remiss to not mention water. So yes, more and more studies are suggesting that proper hydration can help to have a positive effect on controlling inflammation. Perfect. And now we have a question in the here now that's about smoothies. If you were going to make a smoothie that, you know, talking about all the foods that you've talked about today, what would you put in the smoothie? Great question, Marta. Maybe you have some favorites, but like going through some of those foods that may have anti-inflammatory potential, thinking fruits and vegetables, um, chia seeds or flax seeds to add some, um, other other promoting benefits. Um, and then I think it has to be what you like too, right? So maybe there's some nut butter that, um, adds a creaminess and creaminess to it and another texture that I would want to add. Um, yogurt. I like to throw yogurt into my smoothies as well. That sounds great. Those are all, all those Mediterranean type of foods, fruits and vegetables. I wouldn't put fish maybe in a smoothie. But. No, might, <laughs> might alter the taste. Maybe, maybe some people do. Yeah, I don't think I yeah. would do that. <laughs> what about apple cider vinegar? Do you think it, what, what are those, your thoughts on it as anti-inflammatory? Yeah, good, good question again. And I, I think sometimes there's these topics that come up that we need to maybe, um, health claims that we need to zoom out and look at the bigger picture. To my knowledge, there has not been any um, really concrete studies or research that has supported its benefits to um, controlling uh, sources of inflammation. I don't know, Marta, if if you have heard or seen anything otherwise. Um, But again, I, I think, as I mentioned, sometimes we know there are topics that draw a lot of attention. Um, and it's, it's really making sure, as I said, you zoom out and make sure you explore kind of the basis of where the health claim is coming from. Yeah, exactly. I, I think there's anecdotal evidence that it's, you know, people talking about it helping and, and it could help people who, you know, we don't know everything, but it, it's not, it's not going to be harmful if you want to try it. It's a couple of teaspoons in some water or put, you know, apple cider vinegar on your salad. Definitely don't ever drink vinegar straight. That can cause you know, inflammation in your esophagus. Always dilute it in some way. But um, yeah, I think that could be helpful. Okay, so what about other um, activities or lifestyle, lifestyle modifications to reduce inflammation? What do you have to say about those? Oh yeah, I, great question because we are learning more how diet and other, we call them modifiable factors can play a role in inflammation. Um, so in addition to all the anti-inflammatory eating pattern um, topics we discussed, top of mind for other lifestyle recommendations are to avoid or quit smoking, um, engage in regular exercise, and to get adequate, qu- adequate quality sleep. We have a great sleep section on our, on our landing page, again, wegmans.com backslash feel your best, um, all of which have been shown to help combat uh, chronic inflammation. Controlling your blood pressure, keeping a check actually on your dental health as well are two additional factors that may um, play a role in supporting uh, reduction in inflammation. Fantastic. Okay, I think we have one, we have time for one more question. Uh, and this one got asked a lot. I think people are very curious about certain foods that they might need to give up to follow an anti inflammatory eating pattern. Do you think there's any reason people need to give up any certain foods? Yeah, I love this question, Marta, and I, I, I hope maybe after discussing, discussing some of, uh, you know, the, the topics today, I can say that the short answer, and, and folks will know, 
uh, understand why. But the short answer is no. Um, there are no certain foods that you need to specifically give up to follow an anti-inflammatory pattern. We believe, our, our Wegmans eating philosophy, philosophy, that it's important to bring balance, um, variety, and moderation to your plate. And our healthy eating guidelines found on Wegmans.com um, outline a plant-forward eating pattern that doesn't eliminate specific foods or food groups. It is important to remember that what you do most of the time um, is what matters the most. And this, of course, applies to an anti-inflammatory eating pattern as well. Exactly. Yeah. And again, we have so much information on our website. So definitely Wegmans.com, feel your best. Again, Wegmans.com backslash and then one word, feel your best. You'll find all kinds of information. We really appreciate everybody that was here today. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, these, this will be available on our YouTube channel in a couple of weeks. Um, so definitely go check those out and all the other ones we have. We really appreciate you being here today. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody.